What is up you guys? We are back with some more creepy paintings for us all to take a look at and not be able to sleep after. From some ancient cave paintings, to a painting of guillotined heads, all the way to a painting with unknown origins and a horrifying tale that goes along with it. On today's top 10 list, we will be looking at 10 more ancient paintings that are cursed. And make sure you guys stick around until the end of the video where I'll be shouting out a few of your comments. Let's get right into the creepy paintings. Starting off at our number 10 spot, we have this tomb painting. This painting is one of the oldest known Japanese paintings and it comes to us from a tomb which is both incredibly cool and terrifying. This tomb is called the Takamatsuzuka tomb which translates to something along the lines of the tall pine tree ancient burial mound. This tomb was thought to have been built sometime between the end of the 7th century and the beginning of the 8th century, but it wasn't discovered until the 1960s when a local farmer accidentally stumbled upon it. You might be wondering why I'm talking so much about this tomb when you came here for paintings, but it's because without the tomb there are no paintings. This painting is referred to as the beautiful women and is actually painted on the inside of the tomb walls. I'm not gonna lie, while it would be incredibly hard not to open a newfound mysterious tomb, it's just a risk I wouldn't personally take. Who knows what you'd be releasing into the world? This tomb is facing quick deterioration and the Cultural Affairs Agency of Japan is looking into breaking down the walls of the tomb to reconstruct them again in a place where the walls can be free from further damage and mold. This is proving to be a more difficult task than expected though and I can't help but feel like maybe this tomb doesn't want to be moved. In our number 9 spot today we have the cave painting. This painting is the oldest known painting in India and it was found on the walls and ceiling of a cave. It was originally believed that this painting was first created in the 1st century BCE and while there isn't any religious iconography in the paintings, there are human figures, fish, elephants, birds, and different floral patterns. It is said that another artist ended up drawing over the original, which is an incredible shame and could have released some very angry, vengeful energy on the world if the original artist is still somewhere out there watching. To make matters even worse, these paintings have been severely vandalized and a lot of the areas are in quite bad shape. There's something about things that are this old that makes me feel like they should just not be messed with at all. Not only because it's rude, but also because you never know who's watching. In our number 8 spot today we have Dante and Virgil in Hell. This terrifying work of art was created in 1850 and is currently on display in Paris. This painting is depicting a scene from Dante's Divine Comedy which is basically about Dante being taken on a journey through Hell with Virgil showing him the way. The painting is depicting a certain scene where where Dante and Virgil are witnessing two damned souls intertwined in eternal combat. One of the souls was believed to be a heretic, which is how he landed in the underworld, and the other soul, who's biting his neck, was thought to be a man who falsely claimed another man's inheritance, which certainly is not a good thing to do. The painting also features some sort of terrifying creature flying in the background, as well as a lot more damned souls fighting in the fiery pits. This whole painting truly is both a stunning piece of art, as well as an absolute nightmare. In our number 7 spot today we have The Death of Marat. The Death of Marat is a painting from 1793 by Jacques Louis David and it depicts the demise of French revolutionary leader Jean Paul Marat. The painting shows Jean Paul lying dead in his bathtub on July 13th, 1793 after Charlotte Corday took his life. The painting is regarded as one of the most important and famous images of the French Revolution. Charlotte snuck in to see Jean Paul by using a note which promised to share details of the counter-revolutionary ring. Jean-Paul suffered from a skin condition which left him in the bathtub often and it became a place where he usually worked. Charlotte stabbed Jean-Paul in the bathtub but she did not attempt to run away and was later tried and executed for her actions. The painting shows Jean-Paul holding a note which is of course written in French but translates to, given that I am unhappy, I have a right to ask for your help, which is an incredibly eerie message. In our number 6 spot today we have Saturn to devouring his son. This absolute nightmare fuel of a painting comes to us from around 1823 and is a depiction of one of the most famous stories in Greek mythology. This is the myth of Cronus whose name was romanized as Saturn and how he feared being overthrown by his children, so instead of going to therapy to deal with whatever he had going on, he just ate them all. It is said that this painting may have been inspired by another artist's earlier version and that one, while also haunting and beautiful, just doesn't hold the same absolute 
absolutely horrific qualities as this one does. The first painting is a bit brighter and more of a conventional depiction, while the one I'm talking about today just gives off pure psychotic energy. This painting shows Saturn eating his child with the head and one arm already consumed. The brightest parts of this painting are the flesh, the blood, and Saturn's large, bulging eyes. This painting is of course an amazing piece of art, but I think we can all agree it is absolutely terrifying as well. In our number 5 spot today we have The Nightmare. The Nightmare was created in 1781 and there's a lot going on in this one. The painting shows a woman who is fast asleep with her arms thrown out below her, which is all fine and well, but there is also some sort of demon incubus sitting on her chest, which is absolutely weird and not okay. The painting is said to display a woman dreaming and also the nightmare she is having, which is such an eerie description. There are red velvet curtains hanging in the back with a creepy horse's head poking out of them, which is also said to lend into the nightmare. The colors represent so much of what is going on in this painting, with the sleeping woman being brightly colored and the rest of the painting being much darker in contrast. Because of what this painting really is getting at with the addition of the incubus, the painting has often been criticized as being too scandalous. In our number 4 spot today we have the guillotined heads. Well, it really is all in the name with this one. This painting comes to us from 1814 and is showing us a pretty clear image of death and decay. The guillotine is definitely one of the scariest inventions from our past and this painting does not put it in any better of a light. The painting shows two decapitated heads, the one on the left being that of a female with her eyes closed and her skin pale white. The head of the right is a male's and things get a lot more gruesome with him. You can see the jagged marks on the skin of the neck where you can really just get a sense for how harsh this type of punishment really was. With both his mouth and eyes open, the artist was able to capture the bone chilling lifeless expression on his face. Apparently the artist would really keep guillotined body parts so that he would be able to paint them with an accurate likeness, which is both incredible dedication and very very creepy. I wonder if we are looking at the real face of someone who suffered this horrible punishment. In our number 3 spot today we have the Judgment of Cambyses. This painting was created in 1498 and 1499 and it depicts a pretty gruesome scene. It is one of very few paintings from the artist that doesn't depict some sort of religious theme, which is interesting considering the fact that he went so far off the religious track with this one. The painting is showing the arrest and subsequent gruesome flaying of a corrupt judge surrounded by a crowd of people. This piece was actually commissioned by municipal authorities as a piece to be hung in the executive of the city's room in the town hall. I'm not sure what is scarier, this painting in general or the fact that someone commissioned such a horrifying scene. Either way, this painting is definitely best viewed from afar. In our number 2 spot today we have the Massacre of the Innocents. This painting is basically exactly as the title would suggest, unfortunately. This painting is actually two separate paintings which were created in the early 1600s. They are depicting a scene from the biblical massacre of the innocents of Bethlehem as related to the Gospel of Matthew 2.13-18. This story sees Herod the Great, King of Judea, ordering the execution of all male children 2 years old or younger in the vicinity of Bethlehem. Since this painting is showing that, it is an absolutely horrifying scene with many helpless individuals being well, massacred. The first of the two paintings actually ended up being lost for quite some time, but was luckily later rediscovered and now resides in the art gallery of Ontario. We've seen a lot of creepy paintings today, but in my personal opinion, this one might take the cake in being absolutely bone chilling to look at. In our number one spot today, we have The Anguished Man. This is a painting that holds many secrets, the first two being when and who created it. This painting comes from an unknown source and is absolutely eerie. It depicts exactly what the name would suggest, a man looking like he is in great pain and suffering. The painting is apparently made of a mix of paint and blood, and it is said that the creator ended up taking his own life after making it. Because of the unknown origins and this little tale that goes along with it, the painting already gives off some extremely eerie energy, but if that wasn't enough, the man who currently owns the painting claims that it is haunted. He even uploads YouTube videos of the strange happenings around the painting, and it is said that sometimes whispers can be heard coming from it. Whatever is going on with that painting, it sure can't be good. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Now I am going to be shouting out some of your comments from my video, Top 10 Dark Things Gods Did in Ancient Religions, 
part two. Starcore says, OMG, you guys are back in the studio. Congrats, we are. I'm so happy. I was sick of being in my bedroom all day. Happy to be here. Producer Chris, right over there, six feet away, of course. We're vibing, yes. <laughs> J Dope says, Greek mythology would have been very short if Zeus would have kept it in his pants. <laughs> that is very true, but as we all well know, he is a creepy, creepy guy. And I mean, I guess we got a bunch of good stories out of it, so, uh, and it's all made up, which is really the best part. <laughs> Mlusk82, sorry, don't know how to say that, but very creative. Love your vids, all of the people associated with this channel are amazing, keep up the good work. Thank you so much, I have to agree about that. I've got the best coworkers in the world, the best job, I'm lucky. Swole Wolf says, the goofier she says, bye, the more it makes me smile. I don't know how that became the thing, but I'm glad it's the thing because I love just hamming up that bye for you guys. Speaking of which, that's all of the comments I am shouting out for today's comment shout out portion. Make sure you comment something down below and maybe you'll get featured in the next one. You never know. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye. Um, okay.